All right, welcome into the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. Dustin Hawkinsmith here, joined as always by Dave Heckard. We're going to look back as we usually do at last week's action, couple tournaments. Uh, look ahead to this week, pretty light week when it comes to uh, big time duels, uh, but we'll preview a couple of those coming up as we usually do. But first, we've got our very first guest coming on, and it's a good one. Bishop McDevitt's Riley Robel is here with us. He's fresh off a new Oxford Invitational title, returning state finalist, top-ranked heavyweight in the state by PA Power Wrestling, top 15 heavyweight in the country by Matt Scouts. Riley, welcome on. It's good to have you here. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So let me start with this, and this is just my opinion here, but the only sign, the only little bit of drama I can possibly see between this point and through the at least the early stages of the postseason is you and yourself and your wrestling shape and how you're fully transitioning from football to this sport. Where are you in that process? And I would say it's worth noting, I look back at last year, last regular season, you wrestled zero matches in the regular season that went a full six minutes. You're already at two this season. So you're a little bit a step ahead. Yeah. Um, I think Powerade was a big wake up call. It kind of got me, you know, into the mindset that, Oh, well, wrestling season's going. I gotta, I gotta catch up after the long football season. So I think, I think I did a good job playing catch up. I'm feeling really good right now. Not to nothing with my endurance, you know, I'm not getting tired when I'm out there. So I think I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, man. Like I, uh, I have to say, but I, I, I was able to, to watch a little film on you in football and uh, you know, just, just throughout the playoffs, you know, and, and, and what you did, man, I, I love your spot there. You were like the three tech. Um, that's the keystone of like that four man front, you know, four, three, four, four defense. You give me a good three tech, man. I'll make it work. And, uh, congratulations on a, on a good season, dude. Uh, did you watch those NFL games last night? Who's your squad in the NFL, man? Who do you like? The Packers, man. I got it. Uh, I got uh, it. No, dude, I'm a big Niners fan. I am a big Niners fan. So <laughs> nice, confrontation nice, nice. on the podcast. I, I know right out the gate, man, this is a confrontation. I'm not like, I'm not hearing though. Like I, I, I don't want to have a confrontation with this guy. So uh, <laughs> So here's my here's my question to you, man. And and like I said, I uh, I watched you play a good bit, and I know you excelled. And I mean, you were you were a big part of of the success of Bishop McDevitt throughout the playoffs and the impact you had. Um, what what do you feel is you know how does wrestling best translate to football for you? Like you know how does it you know how does it help you the most on the football field? I mean, I just got to go with the. The explosiveness for sure, uh, the hand fight definitely with being a lineman and everything. When the offensive lineman shoots their hands as a defensive lineman, I'm able to really, you know, bat them out of the way. The speed and everything with it. it the hand they, fighting part, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, they just complement each other so well, both football and wrestling, you know, in both aspects. But, man, if I had to pick one, I'd just say, like, just a drive to win. Just, you know. It's the crunch time. You not giving up. You having the heart to push through it, even when you're tired. No, I'm I'm with you. I I feel like, you know that that would be my answer. Like you know when you get into the grind of a football game, like you you know mentally what you're getting ready to get into because of because of what you've been through on the mat. Um, yeah. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You had a good football season, dude. Real good football season. Thank you very much. Yep. And, and I think it's, you know, we hear a lot the football and wrestling ties. And I think, Riley, for your position in the trenches there and the weight class that you wrestle, you know, those are especially complimentary. I, lo I love, you know, Micah Parsons bringing the wrestling, you know, thing all to a national stage and, and stuff like that. But when it comes to the true blue nitty gritty, the one on one battle part of it. You know, the offensive line versus defensive line is where I think that strongest connection is made between wrestling and football. And I think you're, you're living it right now too. that hand fight, uh, the tie ups, the physical, the leverage, you know, there's a lot of stuff that translates. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And your, your journey is interesting because, and I want you to kind of recap uh, freshman wrestling 182 to where you are roughly what 85 pounds later, how you got to this point. And I think it's also worth noting 
you know, the climb for you as an individual continues in both sports. It's going to be really interesting to watch the next couple of years translate and, and how that, uh, you know, brings attention from a national college level and, and all kinds of stuff like that. But let's, let's go back to freshman 182. What work did you put in? What discipline did it require? How much did you lift? How much did you eat to get to this place where you're roughly 270 pounds? I mean, going into my freshman year, I just kind of, you know, I just, I had that thing most freshmen have, you know, they just think everything's going to translate over from middle school. So I just kind of went in right at the weight I was, 195, just kind of, you know, whatever, I think I'm going to be the best guy. And my first tournament of the season, my, like, I think my third high school match, I actually wrestled Jake Lucas in Government Valley at 95. And it was like, oh man, you know, you should probably start putting in some more work and effort into this. So after, after that whole thing went down, I got to 82, that off season, it was really just a matter of knowing what, that I wanted to get bigger, that I had the frame because I grew a little bit, that I just had to start lifting and eating, you know, every day, making sure I, I'm always looking to put like, just, just to keep packing weight on as just fill out as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was really all I thought about it. And I, I think that's, you know, I respect the simplification of it, but I, you know, one thing that strikes me about you is that you do take a pretty professional approach. You do, you are measured, you are purposeful. You, you do, you did, pick out and consume the right things. And you did that without taking any breaks, you know? And I think that's, that's something that is probably worth mentioning too. You're saying, Oh, I just ate and lifted. Yes, you did do those things. But I think the way that you prepared and stuff was of somebody, you know, in my opinion, a lot older than you, than you were at the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I mean, you're, it's, it's, you're in, you know, there's no, there's no kind of in, you know what I mean? Like you either in or you're not. And, 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 you know, you, you were, you were in and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you, re you referenced your freshman year and I, I remember that match you wrestled with Jake and, um, you know, dude, you, you could always wrestle, you know, and even, even as a young kid, a big freshman, you knew that you were going to be talented. I just never see, uh, you know, foresaw you getting, <laughs> getting to this size you got to. And, uh, and man, I, I just, I, I love you as a heavyweight, man. I think you move well, um, you know, great size, you can wrestle. I, I, yeah, man, you're, you're, you're headed for a bright future here in the next couple of years. What do you, uh, who do you work out with, man? Um, you know, in the wrestling room, it's really just uh, Bryce Enders, uh, right. our two Cade Warner, our 89. He's, he's getting pretty big too. He has to cut a little bit. So those are two good, like athletic workout partners for me. And now, then. Do you, uh, do you still work out with Coach Nauman? Does he still work out with you? <laughs> of course man can, can, do, can he can he whip you still dude <laughs> no no I he can't, he can't. I, I don't i wouldn't think so man I, I know he's a tough dude but man i don't think he's he's fighting 270 275 pounds i don't know he tries <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then we we just got coach evans on the staff also he comes in he rolls around with me it's uh his dad coached Hershey, I believe, for a little bit there. Okay. 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 Yeah. D D D son. D son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only time I've ever heard Mike Nauman dejected was about a week <laughs> ago when I asked him how things were going when he works with you. And even last year, he had a little bit of, of optimism in his voice about his chances with you. But they have officially gone out the window. So congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Powerade tournament where you did, uh, you referenced it earlier. Uh, you took your first loss of the season uh, to Jim Mullen from St. Joseph Regional in New Jersey. Uh, that was one of the six minute matches that I referenced earlier. Uh, probably the primary wake up call that you described earlier too. Uh, but you also wrestled in the third place match, Ty Banco from Trinity out West, that Trinity, uh, and beat him, I believe, five nothing. Uh, walk me through the Jim Mullen experience. This kid was ranked number two in the country at heavyweight, yet, in fact, the number one and the number two in that weight class with Nick Feldman there also. 
uh, top five pound for pound guy. Like this is a legitimate, you know, heavyweight. And you go into that match, you take him down, you get him extended in the first period. Uh, you spin around, you're leading him three, nothing in the early stages of the second. What happened from that point forward? And what, what kind of made Jim Mullen a handful? I mean, when, when I really break it down, it's just, you know, the, the first takedown felt good. And then, you know, I got the ride out. I, I really thought I was going to get a tilt there at the end of the first few more seconds in that period. I think you got it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, the stand up, everything was going good. And then it was, uh, I believe we got a little scramble where we ended up out of bounds right before I got my stand up. And it was right around that point that I was, I just, I felt the gas tank, like everything I had ran out and it was still squarely match. And, and, and for people that don't know, like, you know, I mean, you know, people, oh, this kid's a good athlete. He just, he can't, he, he plays football. Like he, he should be in shape. You just think that that's what's up, but you know, it's such a completely different shape, you know? And, and, you know, you, you described it as a wake up call for you, man. And I, I don't, I don't think that's a wake up call. I, I think like, you know, you, you were tested. And, and when Dustin, when me and you were talking about that match, the first thing I said was that's going to, that's going to help him so much. You know what I'm saying? Like getting tested like that, you know, blow them lungs out a little bit, like winning, losing, whatever, you know, your ultimate goal, bud is, is at the end of the year, man. And uh, you know, people don't, people think, Oh, you can just hop out there and wrestle. Well, I mean, there's a big difference between football shape and wrestling shape. And let me tell you, when you hit that wall, I mean, you, <laughs> it's like, it's a serious, serious feeling of helplessness. You know what I mean? You're, you're looking for any bit of oxygen you can get, man. I, I hear you. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that, that match is definitely something that's going to benefit you, bud, I think. I, I mean, I think it already has started to. Every time I'm in the, in the workout room and I feel myself start to hit the wall, it's just like, you know, I think of that match just as some extra fuel, get me to push through it and finish the practice out. It was, it was, uh, it was I mean, yeah, just like you said, hitting that wall and just you, you almost do feel helpless. You're just kind of. You're looking at the clock, just hoping the seconds start to go a little faster. Um, <laughs> and they go the, slower. <laughs> the more you look, the slower it goes. Slower it is. <laughs> are, you, um, are you really kind of chomping at the bit at some point in time? I know it's not an immediate goal, but try, to try to get that kid again. Yeah, I definitely am. I was, uh, after I, I saw that he was going to uh, escape the rock, I really wish we would have gotten into that tournament. That would have been nice, you know. Yeah, it's only been a couple of weeks, but I know my gas tank's gone up so much already. I think I think it would have been a nice shot back at him. But uh, you know, hopefully there's a, there's an NHSCA national tournament in the spring. I think it might be in April. Hopefully he's at that. You know, last year weird with COVID and everything. Hopefully, hopefully he goes back out and uh, I can see him there. One thing that I thought was hilarious because I talked to you before um, Powerade was just you saying uh, I'm trying to wrestle longer in matches but it just can't happen it's like the the it's it's just so the the dominance is is so overflowing in in these matches that you're wrestling that you can't get kids to last longer than than you like you're trying to get mat time and it just hasn't happened and I think the the power eight experience was huge for you because like I said no matches went the distance before the postseason last year so where you're at right now where you're feeling like your lungs are expanding that didn't really happen for you right until late February last year yeah I think I believe actually Jake Moyer in my semifinal at districts was that was my first full match. And I mean, despite him, I don't think he scored any, if not maybe like one point I was, I mean, I was just dying and it was so late in the postseason for me that I didn't think I should be that tired at that late in. So it is, it's nice to, to, you know, get that, get the slap in the face. Like, all right, man, you know, you should, you should start getting that endurance tank up. Make these make these workouts count. It definitely helps. Yeah, and, and you have been dominant. I mean, I know you know this past weekend you wrestled, um, you know the Schmidt kid from uh, from Carlisle, who, who's a tough kid, and, and I think ranked first in the district and in, in AAA. And Dustin, I mean, you and I were talking before that because I, I threw it out there that those two were going to meet, and I said, who do you like in that one? And and I got to give you you some credit here. I mean, you jumped on it quick, and you said you didn't think it would go the six minutes, man. You thought you know, Riley would jump on him quick. And my, my first initial response to that was like, eh, 
eh. But then I, I kind of thought about it and I did come back on board, man. And I, I kind of agreed with you a little bit, Dustin. I just didn't think, I thought it would happen later in the match. I thought maybe you'd grind them out and, and that, that, that match you got, you know, those couple matches you got at Powerade would show up late. And man, I think it was a minute and three seconds into it. Uh, that match was over, man. And that, that's a, that's a nice win. And um, you know, I, I know Schmick's tough, but uh, you know, like, like, like Dustin said, just, just dominating wins, man. And, and, and here, here's what, Riley, like if Riley, if I can just tell Dave, what you told me is that there was, there was a, uh, there was a situation where you thought you got to, you were not awarded to, and you were literally walking back to the circle and you're saying, you know what? I think I'm just going to pin, I'm just going to pin him now. <laughs> that, that's just, that's kind of how I played it over. I thought I was going to mess with him a little more, you know, cut him a couple of times before I did it going, you know, going into the match. Cause like I said, I heard from some of my other coaches that there was a, there was trash talk being passed around. That's what my coaches were telling me. So I, I went into it with like, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll mess with them a little bit, but uh, no, I think it was just after that, that, that takedown going off the edge. I was like, you know what? I think, I think it's, it's clear already. It's the t- it's time to do it. And yeah. there's just, I love, I love the confidence too, man, you know, and, and dude, you're, you're, you're a good kid. Like I, I, you know, last year you came over to Cumberland Valley and, and just chatting with you, like, you know, enjoyed the conversations with you. I know, um, I know your family obviously has had a big influence on you, but you know, if I ask most high school kids, like, you know, who influenced, you know, you, you the most or who had the biggest influence on you, you know, a lot of them would say their family. So I'm going to throw this one at you, man, like outside of your, your parents, like your family, who has really had a big influence on you in your athletic career, man? Um, oh man, I have to say, you know, there's there's a lot of people, but probably my first ever, my first ever club coach, Coach Morrow, Brian Morrow. Man, he, I mean, from the moment I walked in there, he would tell my dad, you know, that kid's gonna be, he's gonna be a good heavyweight someday, and you yeah. know, no, but and it was just. He always he always pushed me. He would he would put me in the groups with Austin DeSano and Spencer Lee and uh, if you know John Pippa from McDevitt, he put me over with. And I mean, I was eight years old. They would just I mean they would pound me, but he'd be like, "Just go get their leg. That's a victory. That's what you got to look for." I think that just kind of that spoke to me a lot. Yeah, you know, got a lot of the kids that do work with him really speak highly of of, of Coach Morrow and. Um, he's obviously had a pretty big impact in the wrestling community around this area, as far as like kids he's worked with and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's real good for the, especially the younger kids getting the technique down and everything. Definitely. I I guess what what I'm curious about now, Riley is um, where you're at. You're midway through your junior season in wrestling. You just finished up uh, the season in football. If you had to pick today, football versus wrestling, if you had if you had a similar opportunity in both, which direction would you go? Man, that's the that's the question, everybody. <laughs> every, I just I'm not I can't pick yet. I, I try so every day. Every day is a different. You know, like you know, one thing will s- slide me that way, the other thing will push me right back. It's it's just it's too it's too touch and go right now. But when, uh, I, when I've got it, as as a follow as a follow up to that, um, what kind of attention have you gotten in both? Um, in wrestling, wrestling's really the only thing, kind of pulling. You know, with wrestling, it's just the the coaches. They you know they get my number and then we get to stay in contact and everything's real cool. I'm gonna start taking some visits here in the, the springtime after the season ends with football, you know, the coaches come into the school. I talk to them in there, you know, they follow me on Twitter, stuff like that, but I haven't had anything with, uh, with football really, really pull. And, and the, the unique thing about, about wrestling and heavyweights is most good heavyweights, they play football and they go play football in college. You know, a lot of good heavyweights are football players where, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, heavyweights in college, good heavyweights are unique, you know, so they're highly sought after when it comes to college wrestling. So it doesn't surprise me that you're getting more attention from wrestling at this point. Um, but, you know, I, I think a lot of doors are going to open up for you too on the football side of things. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> 
you, you got time, Riley. You got time to to let it yeah. all sort out. There's no, there's nothing pushing you other than an idiot behind a microphone asking you the question uh, towards one <laughs> right. one sport or the other. So that's Riley Robel, two way, uh, you know, defensive lineman and heavyweight at Bishop McDevitt, ranked number one in the state, joining us here on the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. Riley, thanks for tuning in and uh, and giving us a little bit of time here. Yeah, thank you for having me. All yeah, right. good luck this season, man. Thank you. Feel free to cut out. Dave and I have some previewing and reviewing to do here uh, coming up on the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast, and we'll start uh, by looking back at, you know, we saw, we saw Riley at the new Oxford Invitational. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, Escape the Rock was Saturday, Sunday. Not a lot of local angle there, Dave. We had Chambersburg going out, but without Char- uh, Carl Schinderdecker. You did see Zach Evans, though, finish fifth at 215 pounds. What do you make of him? Because uh, I really yeah. like him. I think he, he's, he's a name that we should all keep in mind here as we get into January and February. You know, I, I was impressed with him as a freshman. He came out and we wrestled uh, Chambersburg and he wrestled Jake Lucas. Like he was a freshman. Jake was like a junior. And I mean, Jake ended up did, I think, pinning him. But, I you know, he made him work for it. And, uh, you know, I, I was impressed with that kid then as a freshman doing that. And I think this last summer he placed out at Fargo even. He might have brought home a, a medal um, from Fargo. And, and listen, you know, when you go do that and you go out to Fargo and you dedicate, I mean, that's. That's a big time tournament and, and him placing out there and then turning around and placing that to escape the rock. I mean, you know, that that's, that doesn't surprise me because, you know, both are good tournaments, but at the end of the day, job well done. I, I mean, you know, like you just said here, that that's going to be a kid at, at 215 that, you know, we're going to keep our eye on. And I, I, I like this kid. Uh, looking at the new Oxford Invitational, the, the rest of that. Um, and by the way, I, I spoke to Zach Evans um, today, Monday, um, just to kind of catch up with him on his journey. So I'll have that on, on Penn Live here this week. Uh, but looking at new Oxford, uh, McDevitt wins this thing going away, Dave. And not that I, I didn't expect much different than that, but the way that they won this thing with, uh, with four champs, six finalists total, I think they had 11 guys hit the medal stand, including I think the first and third place finisher um, at 189 pounds. But what do you, uh, what do you make of what, what McDevitt was able to do there? And, and uh, you know, obviously highlighted by Riley. Yeah. I mean, they're just a good tournament team, you know, and, you know, we, we do talk on here a little bit about the dual meet scene with them and it's always a deal where, well, you know, they're tough, right. But they have some holes and, and that can come in big in, in dual meets as we've talked about, but in a tournament, man, when, when you have, you know, those, those guys that are, that are going out and scoring high places, um, you know, they're going to, I, I, they're going to win the, they're, they'll probably win the regional tournament too, team, team score wise. And I'll tell you what, they get enough guys to States. Um, I'm not saying they're going to win it, but you know, they have enough to make some noise there. Uh, you know, you get Riley on the medal, you know, he wins it and you get some other guys placing around them. Uh, but just an, an even better tournament team. Uh, Carlisle put three in the finals there. They had one champ, Mitchell Adams, at 172 pounds, who I thought wrestled a really good tournament. Um, you saw him in the final, just a, a lot of poise. And I think, uh, you know, I talked to him Saturday night about this and he just seems to be a, a kid, young kid who is uh, taking in what the season has presented to him and using it to get better. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that too. And, and a young kid, uh, you know, obviously has a lot of experience coming in as a freshman, but uh, that was impressive to me, the one that he got there. And, uh, you know, again, a, a guy that, um, you know, I haven't really seen much this year, uh, you know, wrestle and uh, is a guy that I'm, I'm anxious to see here and see how he does come, come postseason. Uh, CD is sixth place there, had, had a champ at 215, uh, Travis Armstrong, you know, I really, I like what they're doing. I like what Bill Prince is doing and, and, and getting the most out of that roster and starting, you know, he's been chiseling away at this thing for a few years now. And I think starting to get some results uh, with, with guys like Armstrong and Marcel McDaniel there in, in the middle weights. Good transition. I think with Mitchell Adams, looking back at this Carlisle Redland duel that we spotlighted last week uh, ends up going 46, 19 in favor of Carlisle. Uh, Mitchell Adams was, was the second bout of the night and, uh, you know, him and, and Anthony D'Angelo set the tone early, a couple young guys getting back-to-back wins to start that thing, set a tone in that match that Carlisle was coming to wrestle. And, uh, and we saw that and, and how that played out. You thought, you know, we both kind of thought that it would be closer than this for sure, but what, what went a little bit different than, than you expected? Where did things take veer off in another direction for you? 
Um, you know, I, I think, you know, looking at the match originally, it, it was tough to gauge really, you know, um, either either team and, and who they wrestled yet and as far as where guys were. Um, you know, I, I felt that, you know, to, to give credit to Carlisle, um, they kind of came out and, and went after the bonus points. You know, they went out trying to put guys on their back and, you know, matches that I thought were even going to be toss ups or even favored Redland. Like not only did the Carlisle kid win, but, you know, at, at like six and 20 were two big weights that I felt Redland had to get at least one of those. And I mean, Carlisle pinned both of them, um, you know, uh, both Padrick's pin and, and, you know, I just felt like, you know, kudos to Carlisle for not only going out and getting the wins, but going after the bonus points. And I felt like, you know, in, in our last podcast, even Dustin, like, you know, I, I said, like, I, I thought it'd be a little closer, but I thought Carlisle would, would edge it with bonus points. Well, I mean, they, they did more than edge it. Uh, you know, they put an, they put an exclamation point on it, man. Um, so, you know, kudos to them. And uh, I'm anxious to see them, you know, I want, I want to see them wrestle, you know, um, a, a Commonwealth team here. I, I want to see them, you know, wrestle one of these teams that are going to be, you know, in the playoffs too. It, it'll be interesting to see how how they fare out against some of these teams because we just we just don't know yet, you know. Yeah, and and I thought this was a good piece of information. They did beat State College earlier in the year. Uh, I can't really recall looking back, you know, where both lineups were. You know, that's one of the things with this season that we've covered till we were blue in the face uh, about the the kinds of ins and outs and 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 uh, lineups here, lineups there. So we'll see. But good good performance there by Carlisle. They've got a really good shot of of really jumping in the driver's seat in the Keystone Division uh, this week. I think they're already there, but yeah. mathematically they can get in the driver's seat. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, they're, they're, are they a playoff team? Yes, for sure. You know, I, I you know, I, I just like to see them turn like that corner and, 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 and do that in the playoffs and, and get to get a big win or two, whether they win it or not, I don't know, but, you know, get a, get a big win or two and, and, and do that. And um, I mean, they have the potential, uh, you know, Schmick up top now uh, in the match with Redland, they, they, the Miller kid at two fifteen, I saw like injury defaulted. Um, yeah. so I don't know what his injury is, but it'll be interesting to see because you know, as well as I do, you start getting injuries and you know, that that's a big weight up top where you could, you could have a big drop off there from Miller to whoever's next. Um, and a lot of times could lead to six points, you know, given up six. So that could be a nine to 12 point swing sometimes in matches. And, you know, when you get against good teams, if you have starters out, um, you know, that's a, that's a big deal. And, and you know, hopefully that kid's back, um, cause he's been around for a while. I'd like to see him finish his, his wrestling career here, but um, you know, they're a tough team and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see here moving forward where they fall. A couple good matches. I mean, I, I don't think we're heavy on, on electric duels this week, but, uh, Cumberland Valley at Cedar Cliff will be interesting, um, uh, this week. CB's <clears throat> eight and two coming, or, uh, Cedar Cliff is nine and three. Uh, Cedar Cliff has not wrestled a Commonwealth match yet. This will be their first one, assuming it all goes to plan. It's Cumberland Valley finding their stride a little bit. Um, another Commonwealth duel that I know that you're you're keen on is Central Dolphin at, at State College. If this one goes down, you know Central Dolphin is coming out of um, of their shutdown with COVID, so we got to kind of keep an eye on that situation. But it'll be in an interesting um, back and forth between these two lineups. So you know we were just talking, you know Carlisle, uh, you know beat State College you know, earlier this year. And this is a team like looking at their lineup. And again, you don't know what you're getting. Um, but I, I, I mean, I have six wins for them against, against central dolphin, like six that are, I feel like are definitely getting, um, you know, some getting wins and, and, you know, up top again, here we go with, you know, the, the central dolphin thing and, and the bonus they're going to get. Cause you know, the Pobletsko kid from, uh, from state college, two fifteen better. He won escape the rock. You know what I mean? Uh, folk, yeah. They're, they're heavyweight. I mean, that's a toss up match with him and Stu, you know, and he's had a couple of nice matches where I think, you know, he might even be a little favored there over Stu. And, and then, you know, at 72 and 89, you know, state college is pretty solid. So again, like, you know, can, can, can center off and get it done down below and into the middle there. Uh, a big match there I have is at one, 132 with, with beers and, and the Campbell kid. And both of them have like similar, you know, wins against guys and losses. So it's going to be interesting to see there. And that, that could be a big match, a, a big bout in that, in that dual meet. Um, you know, I have Central Dolphin traveling to State College. I get a one pound allowance because State College wrestles Williamsport the night before and Williamsport's darn tough. So I, I, I don't know I, what, what, what balances out more. Is the, the travel for CD more difficult or is the, the match with Williamsport the night before 
you know, for state college going to hurt them? You know, like what's, what's going to play out? Um, I, I, you know, who man, I have it as, as a, as a pretty even match here. And uh, you know, if, if, if Semper Boffin can, can go six minutes with those last couple of weights and, 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 and battle those guys, they can win this bout, but you know, if they get up, if they give up some points, man, which I, I, I kind of anticipate a little, I mean, I, I think I, I, since state college might be favored here a little, you know, and, and uh, you know, here we go talking about, you know, the Carlisle, but you know, Carlisle could be the team CD could lose to, and you know, that's all matchups. Um, so man, I, I, it'll be interesting to see here. And if that match even happens, uh, like you'd said earlier, um, you know, two teams that have both canceled at different times because of COVID and, yeah. Um, you know, they're all battle on that. So wow. the other one, I, I, I you know, the, the Chambersburg Mifflin County is an interesting one. And again, I think, I think Mifflin County is just going to be a little bit too much for Chambersburg right now, especially if they don't get some of the guys back in the lineup from last Thursday. A lot of non-wrestling variables involved in a lot of these things. So we'll have to kind of stay tuned. We'll follow back up on next week's edition of the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast with how these things went. If we got a chance to see them, we'll review, we'll preview as we always do. Maybe we'll get another special guest involved. We'll see. That's Dave Heckard. I'm Dustin Hawkinsmith here wrapping up this edition of the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast.